It's quite easy to get started. I will just share a personal experience. Uh, when I was studying at USC in LA, I ran to be the VP of operations of the consulting association. You know, like different colleges have different marketing association, finance organization association. So I ran for the elections for the consulting association and I lost. And then again, I ran for the VP of marketing and again, I lost. So obviously I was very dejected that I did not get to be and my friends were getting positions in other organizations. So first I was very upset and I said, you know what, screw it, if nobody's going to make, uh, give me a position of power, I'll just make my own organization. It doesn't have to be for profit, sometimes just do it for the experience. Sometimes just do things to make things happen and most times just do it to like, you know, personal vengeance that I did not get to be the tougher, so come let me do something else. You know what happens though with startup itself is very glamorized and you know, people expect it to be a certain format. But a startup basically is, you know, some idea that you have and you make it happen. So whether you're doing it for kicks or whether you're doing it to make it into a very big business, a startup I think is just the first step was making something happen. This can be a project, a play, or a business, or anything that you do. A startup doesn't have to be a very strict format. You know, I think just get started. One of the things is students, uh, par you know, parents always put focus on academics, but one of my professors in USC told me this. She said, look, either you can be a 95% student and have only academics to show, or be an 80-85% uh, student and have three four more things to show so when I was at USC I was an 80-85% student but I, I taught an IT class I had my own student organization and I was a cartoonist for the college newspaper and so it created a more well-rounded entrepreneurial way of learning and there are companies out there so if you want to apply to some very large bank or something they may want you know someone who's a 95% student but a company like Vue or an innovative company will say, no, we want the 80-85 percent boy or girl who's taking the initiative to excel in other things also and not a unidimensional person. Yeah, I mean, entrepreneurship is probably as like swimming or cycling or something, you know. You, everybody can do it. You don't need an in inherent talent. But you have to take the risk and then you have to never give up. Startups are required in India for one, creating jobs and second, creating the right kind of people into the workforce. And you know, let me tell you, this whole top of variety mentality is not going to work for a very long time because the world is so competitive these days. You know, good marks is really no guarantee that you're going to succeed. The biggest hardship is when you sort of throw in the towel and give up or your team gives up. You really have to, even in hard times, be like, you know, don't give up now. This is going amazing. So hardships are more in terms of attitude rather than situation. If your child is a shy, introverted kind but has great potential, maybe be a bit more of a helicopter parent where you hover over your child. But if your child is a free spirit, entrepreneurial, just sort of let them be and let them sort of surprise you. Like discipline them in some way, but don't cut off their wings. So it's more of roots and wings. Some children need stronger roots, some children need stronger wings. Well, you know, there are a lot of fun experiences. My team and I have done amazing work together where, you know, we go to customers, we travel the country, we, we go to trade shows. It is very fun dealing with customers coming up with products. This year in 2014, I think the one highlight for me has been that uh, I was invited at the Wharton India Economic Forum to speak in Philadelphia. Very amusing because my mother is like, oh, with your marks, you probably wouldn't have gotten in. <laughs> and I really would not. And here I get to go and speak there. And uh, it kind of made me sad that I was the only young woman in the entire list of like 25 top speakers. And this is the one where they called Narendra Modi to speak. Now, it's been like six, eight months down the line, so I'll tell you this, but I actually got calls from uh, political parties and media and powerful people threatening me and my father that 
do not let your daughter go and speak because top businessmen have withdrawn from this and we can create trouble for you and uh, you know we'll do this and we'll do that and she better not go and I appreciate when my dad was like she's going she's going you know, the answer he gave to these people and even for me I was like on the phone with the economic times and on the phone with like some influential person like oh my god this sounds really dangerous and there were like protests and everything happening but then the entrepreneur in me is like, you know what, I'll never get a chance like this. So screw everybody else. I don't care if I get shot. I'm going. And I went. And I think as an entrepreneur, that was just such a wonderful experience because the the I, I really have, as my brother says, an underdeveloped sense of danger. And I was like, what's the worst that can happen? You know, even if they trouble me, I'm pretty sure I've got like the support of the youth and women, etc. That you're troubling me for something I've not done. And I don't have any political preferences. So I'm going. I don't care if you are not going, I'm going. And uh, the risk taking ability and the thought of never having to give up, as I mentioned earlier, was a moment that I was proud of. That, you know, I, I took that chance. And it was great. Start when you're a kid. You know, there are kids who are always making and selling something. The kids who like, I'll do this for you, you pay me this much money. Uh, start when you're a kid. Start as only, start, start today. This, this whole world of the venture capital world has sort of glorified this entrepreneurship into making it sound like it's rocket science. It's not, right? It's just saying that, look, I have this idea, I think it's feasible, I want to do it. Go ahead and do it. Start as soon as, start today, have an idea, do it. But uh, don't spend too much time analyzing. One of the things which you taught in business school is this whole analysis paralysis mentality that you really overthink something. Whereas with Vue, my dad was like, when I was 24, I remember I remember driving down Bandra flyover. I remember this specific spot also. And my dad's like, so you want to be CEO of this Vue company that you have in mind? And I think I thought about it for like three seconds and I'm like, yeah. You know, and I, I dove into it and I got started. Had I done the whole analysis paralysis, should I, shouldn't I, but maybe there are better things out there, but I don't know about this, that I would never have gotten started. So just do it. Speak to successful people. I always had this mentality that if I want health advice, I'll ask a healthy person. If I want wealth advice, I'll ask a wealthy person. So if I want something on wealth and business, I'll ask my dad. But if someone really unhealthy is giving me health advice, my brain will just shut. So go and find like experts. It's one of my favorite things. I'll give an example. My dad wanted me to be in charge of the HR for the group. This was about three or four years ago for the whole group. And I had not graduated in HR. I had no experience. And nor did I have time to like go for MBA. So I called up Lena. Lena Nair was the HR director for Unilever and now of course she's been promoted, she's in Europe now. And I only met her at like certain events and I wasn't like great friends with her but I had like contact. And I called her up and like, Lina, you know, I really need your help, can you teach me what you know about HR? Can I meet you for coffee? And uh, she said, yeah sure, and so I went to down to her office at Unilever, we, over lunch, one and a half hours. She gave me like 20 years of gyan. And I immediately came back as it was fresh in my head. I typed it down, I slept the notes, and then I wrote, sent a nice gift with a thank you note. And I learned more in that one and a half hours than I would have at some fancy course. So, the first thing that young entrepreneur aspirants need to do is find who are your role models and reach out to them. You will be surprised how many entrepreneurs actually love meeting students just so that they can get ideas and be inspired from them. And you won't know till you don't try. When I was a student, I used to email like top entrepreneurs, can I come meet you, can I have coffee with you, can you teach me and sometimes they say yes. So just say that okay this person I, is a role model, this person I want to meet, this person I want to meet and find a way to meet them. It depends on what you're doing. But try and be different. Whatever you're doing, you're not going to stand out unless you're different. The day you feel the entrepreneurial itch that I'm dying to make this happen, just, just do it. Make a chart. 
of pictures and articles, things from magazines, cut it up and put it together and say, this is my entrepreneurial dream, this is what I want to do. And forget what everybody else is doing, just focus on saying, I want to compete with myself in five years, I want my life to look like this. And focus all your energy towards that. I think initiatives like the Flatter 2 uh, entrepreneurship and internship mentorship program is fantastic. Uh, everybody needs that push. Everybody needs that roots and wings. And I think that's what you guys are offering to students. And I think it's a wonderful initiative. And I'm very happy to be part of it in whatever small way. I love role play. I am a sales girl one day, I am a product person one day, I am a dealer one day, I am a marketing person one day and I keep changing my roles and it's pretty much like sort of being an actor or something and you have so many roles you can play based on what information you want to get out or what you want to achieve very often I go for a party or something, people don't know who I am or what I do and it's be like yeah I am a gossip columnist, I am an urban planner, I am in this, I am in that, I mean all kinds of funny roles just to get people's reactions or I'll be like yeah I work for this company called View I work in the marketing department and then I get honest feedback from people because <laughs> if I said I'll see you they'll be like oh very wonderful but if I'm like I work there then like oh this will be like and this will be not like so the role play aspect of entrepreneurship that you can be a different person every day which you can't do so much if you're in a very strict you know professional CEO role I absolutely love that I try it at events, I try it at parties, at different forums, I try it at standing as a store sales girl. And it just rounds you off as a person really well and it makes work fun. If you're not having fun being an entrepreneur, then don't be an entrepreneur, then take a job. <laughs>